Hola, ¿qué tal? Soy Francia Reisa de Grownish y How I Met Your Father. Y tengo tanto orgullo de decir que soy mexicana y hondureña. Yes, I was a fan of the original series and I'm so happy to be a part of it now. It's going amazing. Everyone is so talented and so funny. As a fan of the original, I am so, so happy about these scripts. They're hilarious. My sister calls me the cult classic queen and I was like, well, the luck's not gonna stop here, all right? So where this one's gonna be a success, Grownish is a success, which is a spinoff of Blackish. You know, all the cutting edge movies I did and Bring It On 3, they were all a success. So I'm going to say I'm nervous, but I'm also excited because one, it's good. And two, I was like, you know, I have a good track record. So let's keep it going. One of the things that I always ask myself is I have to make a decision if I'm going to make this character a first, second or third generation Latin American, because there's a difference. I'm a first generation Latina. We grew up speaking Spanish and translating for our parents. A second generation, which would be my children, are not going to do that. And in most of my projects, I have played first generation, but I made a decision. I was like, you know what? I've played first and second generationers, I don't see them getting a lot of love. So I'm choosing to play her as a second generation Mexican-American who is a little bit more Americanized than we are. And I want other second generationers or, or, or so before to understand that it's okay to be in touch with your Latin side, but not know it so well. I'm really excited that I made this choice and I haven't even talked to the writers about it. I'm excited for youngins to see, oh, she looks like me. Oh, she's playing second generation. Okay, so it's not a bad thing that I can't speak Spanish or that I have white friends because I was judged a lot growing up for having white friends and my Latin friends would call me whitewashed. So trying to figure out a way to break barriers open conversation and have other Latinos, Latinx people um, growing up saying, I can do this too. And it's okay that I'm this way and that way and not maybe not this way. Republican pep rally inside the auditorium. Uh, we'll just have to make sure that our sprinklers are high functioning for all those tiki torches. Oh, don't worry. There are enough liberal tears on this campus to put out any fires. One thing my acting coach always says is you cannot judge your character. If you judge your character or you judge the script, you're not gonna be able to perform. And this is a challenge for me. And I wanna understand where she's coming from. I am happy though, that in this season, you see a different side to Anna, more human side to her. And playing this has definitely given me a different eye. And I don't care if someone thinks differently from me. I care if you're racist, point blank period. That's all I care about. I'm really happy to bring this role to life. And I'm glad that for me, it was a lesson for me to open my mind more. I still am more open-minded in having grace and understanding of where people are coming from with their beliefs. And I do uh, give this role a lot of credit for it. I don't want that, that. Slut? Yeah, that's the one. Slut. Touching my baby. When I first started, oof, I mean, I couldn't get an audition that didn't say sexy or lascivious or va ba boom and of course I get a call. In the beginning too, they were telling me like, when you slate and when you introduce yourself, um, don't say it with your accent, um, say it more American. Um, I had a casting director tell me one time to stop wearing hoop earrings because I wasn't ghetto and it looks bad in auditions. Like, oh yeah, I've been through it. I'm glad things are different now. Individuality is, is celebrated. So we're doing better. It's not great, but we're doing a lot better. My sister told me a really sad story and I, I hate it so much. Again, being first generationers, you know, I didn't go to college. My middle sister didn't go to college, but the youngest one did. Sorry, I'm gonna cry. And because my parents didn't go and, and they're immigrants, they've all, of course wanted us all to go to college, but I started working and you know, th their faith was left on Irlanda, the youngest. She went through her SATs by herself. I, no one was there for her when she got her college acceptance letter to UCLA. We helped her move in, but all the stuff leading up to it that I see parents do now, we didn't do that because we didn't know any better. And it wasn't until therapy recently that she was like, that really sucked that I had to do that by myself. And that's another situation where I'm like, crap, like it's so hard to juggle both sides. It's hard to want to be in touch with our Latin side, but get judged if we're not but also judge if we are. It's just, it's a weird limbo. So of course I struggle with it to this day still. And so quarantine really made me grow up. I started reading a lot. I started doing a lot of work on myself. I started 
showing even my audience a different side to myself that I wasn't comfortable sharing before because I was so afraid of judgment. There's so many interviews out there that I've done throughout the years. And I was talking out of my ass, just saying things that I thought the other person wanted to hear, which never, never goes well. So I haven't been my true self until um, I got on Grownish. And I'm even my truer self. And you know this because I'm on camera without makeup and I am self-conscious about it, but I am my truer self now than I ever have been in my life. And now I have a platform where I can use my voice so other people felt seen. We matter in this economy. We matter in this country. We're human beings. And I think more so what people are fighting for is human rights. I don't know if it's gonna happen with this administration, but I do hope that those camps on the border are shut down and they stop separating children from their parents and they find a different solution because it is not right. It is up, there you go, I said it. It's up. The plan for God and all of us is not to separate people from their parents just because they're a certain color. We're trying to do things right. We don't, no one is trying to come here illegally, but you're not giving us an option and DACA was, and you're trying to take that away. So help us out. Help me help you, help you, help me. I love that we have a month, but we should be celebrated every day because we're human beings, you know? So thank you for highlighting us. Thank you for honoring our culture in the month of September. It's made me who I am. Um, my favorite parts are the food, not a secret, and our bodies. You know, I, uh, I'm skinny, but I'm curvy. And uh, for a long time, I hit my body. I still do on Instagram, like, I'm not gonna, show what I don't want to show, but I appreciate JLo, I appreciate Selena, and I appreciate all the people that, you know, came before me and opened doors for me to help me appreciate where I come from. And I got to give a lot of credit to my parents. They made sure that we loved who we are as Mexican Honduran women. But my favorite part about it is probably, look, we fight, we have our differences, but no matter what, we're there for each other. We cook some really good food and yo, we got some good music and good dancing. And I'm so happy, and I don't think this gets enough credit, that I can hear my native tongue on American radio. Bad Bunny, Carol G, J Balvin, Maluma, the list goes on, Becky G. I love hearing that on Kiss FM and Power 106. Our culture is beautiful. Amongst the Latinx community, we have different dialects, but we have the same heart. That's, you can't, you can't deny that. We all have the same heart. Thanks for watching E! News. Have thoughts on the story? Sound off in the comments below. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so we can keep you up to date with the latest in Celeb News Daily.